Okay, one of the, the works that I like to talk about in, in the context of, of it being important for me, but also um, it has resonance with, a, with a, a wider, I think, especially South African um, community. Um, it was in the late 80s, so that gives a context to, to the time in which it was made. Um, the context also being this was, you know, during the time of apartheid. And um, many of us artists were thinking a lot about um, how to express the, um, the situation that we were all in, um, in South Africa. And um, many artists, because artists are concerned about um, injustice, and many artists during that time were thinking, how could they make work which expresses this concern? And one of the works I made at the time um, and which was part of a, a series um, which I called history paintings, and they were kind of ironical history paintings, um, was a work called Patience on a Monument, a history painting. I explored and challenged what was then the dominant narrative of history um, as told to then all South African uh, children. Um, black children and white children had this dominant narrative um, of apartheid history and colonial history. So not just apartheid, but colonialism. And we were basically brought, on, uh, brought up on images that were extremely negative and stereotypical. Um, and to change the narrative, in a sense, you had to also change the images, or at least disrupt the images. And so what I did in Patience on a Monument, a history painting, was to tear up the history books that I was um, brought up on, and so many of the children of my generation were brought up of, on, and tore up the, many of the images in the history books, the illustrations, and um, use that material to make this collage of a massive landscape and um, painted also on parts of it, but uh, also photocopied some of the, 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 the images to get that sense of repetition, the repetition that happens in this, when you, uh, you know, exposed constantly to a certain kind of very one-sided view on, on history. Um, and how images are important in doing this, in getting into your sense of, of, of self-perception, self self-awareness. And um, so then I made this massive landscape um, and in the middle had a pile of objects that were like still life kind of objects, painted very thickly with impasto paint. And on top of the pile, was um, um, a, a woman sitting, a black woman sitting, um, um, basically the work speaks about the, the, the problems and the difficulties around not necessarily only history um, that is problematic being perpetuated, and that's, of course, that's what happened under apartheid, but also what, what we do and what kind of monuments we need to make when, <laughs> when you can, when that history changes. And even, that was even before the history was changing, you know, before the history changed, this was the 80s. So um, that's an important work. So the important aspect of that is literally that those history books um, I acquired, some of them I had, um, because I, I'm a great collector of, of old things, <laughs> but I also uh, acquired some of them, I found some of them, as I say, I photocopied some of the, the images in the history books, but basically it's material that's just out there. It wasn't 
art material. It wasn't an art medium necessarily. It was old history books um, and um, and collage, of course, is also an incredibly interesting way of of um, making art, which is not necessarily reliant on fancy art materials. But it was an important work to make at the time. Um, and there was also a lot of personal aspect to the painting. It wasn't just a, 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 a sort of um, a distant um, political statement. Um, it, uh, there was a lot of, lot of of my own history that sort of went into that into that painting. But I think what was important about it was that it it wasn't so well received. <laughs> in that people thought that, you know, I had up before that made very sort of conventionally beautiful paintings. I mean, maybe they weren't so beautiful, but they were at least more conventional than tearing up history books and using the pa pages to construct a, a landscape. Um, and so there were sort of responses that it was too political, um, not aesthetic enough, which I think it's very aesthetic, all these questions. Um, but then it was, and it almost didn't make it onto a big national exhibition for which I submitted it. So there was, um, there were these national exhibitions which were competitions in the 80s, the Cape Town Triennial, I think they were called. And Cape Town Triennial, I think it started in 1982, and I think the last one was 1991. And, um, Every two years, artists could submit um, their work for selection um, and for consideration for the prize. And um, the, in 1985, I had won a prize for one of my paintings. So, of course, um, there were some sort of expectations that I would deliver a, um, a work that was similar to the work that I had delivered before, but I didn't. I delivered this Patience on a Monument, a history painting, and it almost didn't make the selection for the exhibition. It certainly wouldn't have got to being a prize, to getting a prize. And, um, but it was bought by the William Humphreys Museum in Kimberley. And, um, they were really pleased to have been able to buy it because they hadn't had a chance to buy works before, although I think it wasn't the kind of work that they had, they had imagined they would buy. Um, it's since become one of the most important works that they have in their gallery. And who loves it the most but school children? And I think it's a really, really interesting way to, to think that to, to almost give back in a way to to the to the the kinds of contexts in which if i think about it apartheid really did i think what can one say you know it's it, it, there was no uh, arts education during apartheid in uh, for for the majority of the people in this country, um, and I think it was obviously it's it was it's almost like taking a really bad situation with patients on a monument, taking the image of a really really terrible situation, transforming it and making it into something that says it needn't be like that anymore. You know, we have a, a different future, but we can be reminded of what it was like and know that we will not do that again. So, um, Patience on a Monument went and is in Kimberley, but it's also traveled all over the world, it's been on loan. Um, and um, um, many people, this is how memory works, thinks it's, it's become so important uh, in the, history of, of, of South African art, at least. I'm, I'm not saying this. People have, meant, have said that it's become important in the history of, of South African art, so much so that people keep thinking 
that it won a prize on the Cape Town Triennial, which it barely got onto, and you know, um, or that they saw, saw it on the Standard Bank Young Artist Award prize, and which I wasn't one of them. <laughs> so it's a kind of an interesting thing how certain works capture the imagination of a moment, um, and often they're not the the kind of conventional paintings that we might think of as constituting the perfect kind of artwork. Yeah, that's just a very long way around talking about a, a painting, but if we're going to show any images, I think it might be quite a, a good one to show as Patience on a Monument, a history painting, because it does um, speak to so many of the issues from how you can make art out of uh, discarded material, how you can make art out of provocative material, how you can make art out of um, um, destroying something to create it, so tearing up the history books to reassemble them in different ways that speaks about a different possibility, a different future. And I think it also speaks about the fact that there are questions really about how we make monuments. And the questions are productive questions. They're not questions that we, sh we should, you know, um, sweep under the carpet. They're questions of asking ourselves who we are as um, South Africans, who we are as Africans, and how we want to engage with our past in a way that will make our future much, much better.